everyone. I am art prof teaching artist Deepti Menon, and I am joined here with art prof teaching artist Alex Rowe. Welcome, everybody. Today, we are talking about why is it so hard to start an artwork? If you are looking to strengthen and flex your art muscle, Art Prof is the community for you. We have tutorials, critiques, professional development, and more, and it's all for free. All right. So Alex, I wanted to start off by just asking you, what do you think is your hot button number one reason for why it's so hard for you personally, or maybe as a teacher, what you've seen with your students? Um, what is that number one reason why it's so hard to start an artwork? Uh, it sounds a little over dramatic, but it's this big sense of like, eh, why bother? Like, mm -hmm. it's weird, but it's something to overcome with every piece. And I know it's different for every person. Like, everyone has a different, as you said, like, big issue of why every piece is hard to start. Yeah, what's what's yours, if you don't mind me asking, too? <laughs> I think the why bother is definitely a good one. It is almost like an umbrella, I feel like, for a bunch of other reasons, because the why bother begins with like, oh, like, will I have the energy to complete this? Um, and really, I think what it comes down to is overthinking, like, instead of just you know feeling something in your gut and being like, this is an idea I like, and I just want to explore it. I think a lot of it ends up being overthinking. And even before putting one stroke of mark on your sketchbook, you're already thinking about the end product or you're already thinking about how bad it's going to be or you're already thinking about the perception it's going to have when it's done. And it then you are in this ball of anxiety um, and it's no good. And then you just like can't, <laughs> you just can't get anything done. Do you find that happening to you? Oh, 100%. Um, and it's funny, Neil Espinoza has a really good take too, where he has tons of thumbnails that he hasn't worked on yet. I don't even know why I can't start working on those pieces. And that's hitting on that other thing of where you have too many ideas. Like mm -hmm. you can't start on the final piece yet because you're like, oh, I could do this one. I could do this one. I could do this one. And yeah, if, too many ideas is interesting too, because it's like, you're kind of almost vibrating with passion and desire to create something, but your mind is muddled with so many options for what to make that you can't really have like focus or drive because you, your energy just keeps shooting out into different, different areas and there's no time to focus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Trahapace 150. I'm the worst at reading usernames, has a really good way to put this fear thing we were talking about of, it's hard because of fear. I think we become afraid that what we make can't match what we envisioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have this thing where I the why bother is kind of based exactly on that. It's like, uh, it's not going to, it's not going to be good. Like I, sh I need to work more on making it good. When the big irony there, which of course I overcome with every piece I start, is that you get better with every piece you do. Mm -hmm. You just need to actually start. I'm curious, Alex, like for the thumbnail situation, you would think that that would be such an easy way to start an artwork because thumbnails are low stakes, they're small, they're not, you know, nobody's looking really at your thumbnails when you present your final work. But I totally empathize with Neil Espinosa with the fact that thumbnails wow. are really hard to get started on. And I'm curious, Alex, why do you think even that is so difficult for a lot of us? Yeah, that's really interesting because for me, I noticed it's always let's say the high stakes pieces, where if it's either a personal project that I'm really excited about or a commission piece that I'm really anxious about, those are always very stressful to start because I'm afraid mm -hmm. of not doing it justice or not doing it right. Whereas if it's a low, let's say a low scale commission piece or a low scale personal project, where say my concept is pretty simple and I just want to have fun with it, then it's really easy. And there have been paintings like that that turn out great that take me a day. I start it, finish it, and it's done. Turns out great because it was just such a simple concept. Yeah, I think also like as you're saying that I'm realizing that, you know, maybe one of the ways that I've found that I overcome this difficulty to start is focusing wow. on process rather than product and or the final product. And I feel like the overthinking a lot of times happens 
because you're worried so much about the end result um, and what things are going to look like and you want everything to be good or worthy, but you're not, you know, really thinking about the process of getting there and putting as much importance on the process and the fun of it, um, which I think a lot of times if you allow yourself to just enjoy the process and enjoy that learning process and the discovery along the way, starting things are is less scary because you're just, you know, living in the now and living in what you're going to discover. And it becomes exciting to actually make mistakes and it becomes exciting to make discoveries. Um, and then you'll just land up in a final piece. But as you said, it is hard to have that mindset when you're working on something like a client based project or something with a really specific um, end goal that's already presented to you, like even a class project or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's, that's such a good way to put it is being open and ready for the piece to become something new. Like, yeah, every piece I've done that I've been anxious that it won't be good enough. It's always different than what I imagined, but in a better way. And in, mm -hmm. in a very funny way, I remember saying to a friend years ago, it's like, if I knew exactly what would turn out, I wouldn't paint. <laughs> like, there's always surprises to it that kind of change what happens. Um, yeah, definitely. We're getting an interesting um, take on like advice for how to fix this dilemma. Um, what about starting on small pieces to prepare for a new piece? Uh, Neftali Albert is saying, and yeah, that's actually great advice. And it's essentially like taking thumbnails to that next level. And mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to go to not just do thumbnails, but to also do color studies. And it seems like it's a lot of extra work, but it could be helpful for folks. Definitely. We have this interesting comment from Laura Yoder saying, maybe we need to let the piece decide what it wants to be. I think we're trying too hard to control and deferring is easier to, to relax. Um, I think that's a great comment. I mean, like, yeah, a lot of times I like thinking about how my piece has a mind of its own and is like a living being. I mean, I say everything that I make is like my baby and I want it to you know, have a life of its own and breathe and tell me what it wants and have like a collaborative relationship with my final piece. Um, and yeah, I think like relinquishing that control and that need to be this almighty being and real and realizing that your piece can guide you too is a great way of taking some pressure off of yourself um, and, and allowing yourself to really enjoy and indulge in the process. I wanted to quickly go back to the idea of like thumbnails not really working out for you um, because a lot of people do think that the initial starting of a piece, regardless of what it is, is to start with thumbnails. But I actually found that sometimes when thumbnails aren't working for me or I have too many thumbnails, brainstorming in a different idea or coming back to like the really like nitty gritty brainstorming session helps me funnel down my ideas. Um, so it's almost like taking a step back. And Alex, I'm curious, do you mm. ever like take a step back from thumbnails and what ways do you find are helpful for brainstorming for you and like narrowing down your focus? Yeah, that's there's a lot of things in learning with art that I go back to the way I did it like when I was a kid and in high school where when I first started like formal art education, it was just kind of crammed down. Like you got to do thumbnails. You've got to do thumbnails, minimum 25, minimum 50, minimum a hundred. And I would always kind of grid my sketchbooks with these little one inch by two inch blocks. And I'd be like, okay, these are my 50 thumbnails I have to fill out. And that always felt very unnatural and hard to explore. When you're mm -hmm. right, going back to that free form, using my sketchbook as a sketchbook and just kind of doodling and having weird amorphous Whoa. sketches emerge from it is yeah. a very effective way for me to thumbnail. Like I cannot work in that like organized grid. Definitely. I think every person needs to realize that they have their own way of thinking and their own way of making process and make process work for you and make that, you know, thinking process you fit you. And so sometimes writing works for someone. Sometimes, you know, getting up and physically acting things out and taking photographs or taking a walk helps for people. So there's so many different ways, I think, of starting an artwork that isn't exactly 
pulling out a canvas and drawing a line on a paper. Um, we have a couple of really interesting comments. W315 is saying, I have this inner critic that starts undermining me from the moment I stare at a blank sketchbook page or try to thumbnail. It whispers, is this really an original idea? Isn't this a lame idea? I think we all have this inner critic, W315. I don't think any artist doesn't have this, so we are with you there. Um, I wonder, Alex, do you have any tips for silencing this inner critic or ways to make that critic your friend <laughs> oh yeah uh the comfort it's one of those things where you have to like comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable where if you're feeling that like don't stress because i always like to think the fact that you're making the work means that you have a lens that is unique and different it's only mm -hmm. you can tell it even if it's the most boring original concept ever and then it's very helpful to counter that with examining, okay, how can I spice this up? How can I make it more interesting? I got a lot of this feeling exactly when I was doing a portfolio series on like an old Agatha Christie mystery, which mm. I loved, but it was very basic. You know, it's like, oh, illustrating something that's been illustrated literally hundreds of times before. How do you want to do that? So it's good to not deny what you're interested in, but it's also good to keep that critical eye alive so yeah I, think I also oh sorry continue oh no i was just gonna say it's good with like what w315 is saying to not give that too much energy but yeah sorry keep going <laughs> i was just gonna say like with this inner critic it's great to remember that like all you're doing is a sketch you know at this moment or all you're doing is a thumbnail it's very low stakes so if your inner critic is you know already telling you that things are lame just tell them hey it might be lame now and that's fine, but that's why I'm hashing out these ideas. And that's why I am, you know, doing this is to get to a point where I feel strong and hopefully you feel strong, um, Lee. And I like this comment by Anna Jolie that says, all of my strongest pieces, uh, there is always a crappy first attempt at that piece. And then I realize what I didn't like and I completely redo it. So that's a really great example of like why working, like focusing on the importance of the process and just diving in and trying something rather than mm. sitting around and marinating in this self-loathing can be great because it'll just, you know, help you get closer to that awesome final idea that, you know, you do have. Um, I wanted to bring up the idea of impatience. I feel like a lot of times getting started is hard for me because I just want it to be done. You know, like I don't even want to I feel this like excitement to do this idea, but impatience with the process of getting there and impatience with all the frustration I'll have. So I don't even start it because I'm so impatient with it, which just seems like a total, you know, confusing, weird box to be put in. But it happens to me so often. Does that happen to you, Alex? Yeah, uh, it does. But I'd imagine not nearly as much as like, with animating because that is such a long process <laughs> um yeah i definitely get that with as i'm working on like bigger like sometimes just physically larger paintings this kind of i know exactly what to do i've done color studies i've done the thumbnails everything right but i just look at it and it's like this big white piece of paper i'm like okay <laughs> it's like yeah a desire for it to just be done and like on the wall and finished um, and I think we're getting a lot of people pointing out that it's all either like fear or like that impatience to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this comment from Blue Wolf Spirit that says, I'm working on my first painting, put the Sienna, Sienna background in and stopped. I think you've convinced me to do some studies in a different media as a practice for the piece and give me confidence. I think that's really great too. Sometimes you're just working in a material that might not be inspiring to you, you know, like working on a in an oil painting maybe that's what you want the final thing to be in but working in oil for the sketches might not be you know the best way to approach it it might not have the same energy that you need for brainstorming because working on a final piece versus working on the planning stages there's a different energy to it and there's a different way that your mind is working and sometimes working in that same medium is not conducive for the best results for both um 
you know, both sections of creating that final piece. So you might want to try like what Blue Wolf Spirit is saying, try doing some studies in a different medium. Do you really like the messy, like does charcoal really unlock a level mm. of looseness and free flowing thought for you? Then you might want to do your studies and your sketches in charcoal at first and then slowly transition into your final medium. Like find out, Find out what works for you. Do you do that, Alex? Do you ever work in different media before jumping into the final? Uh, I do not as often as I should. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I just pigeonholed myself into watercolor gouache and a little bit of acrylic, which is okay. I, I'm happy with it, but it's, yeah, anytime that I do start to think of like, what if this was a sculpture? Then my brain kind of explodes. I'm like, what if it was a sculpture? <laughs> and it does actually, yeah, it gives me that excitement uh, with the piece again. Uh, mm -hmm. We're getting a really good solution-based comment from uh, Lemonaden, where they're asking, do you guys start art, art and develop it from it or plan everything out with a thought behind it? I feel like sometimes I should have a meaning when in reality I painted it because I simply like drawing it. And I feel like that's an attitude that I really wish I could have. And it sounds like it would conquer a lot of those anxieties of starting a piece. If you kind of get mm -hmm. back to the root of like, no, at the end of the day, I still just enjoy this. Have you ever had that experience where you're kind of reminded deep tea during a project, all of this stress is going about in your head and then you kind of wake up and you're like, oh, never mind. This is really what I like doing. Yeah, I think that artist burnout thing is real. Um, we have this comment actually from Char Fern that says, I often like my ideas better than the final pieces. I sometimes feel like I lose the energy. And I think like sometimes you're working and you're really like, you just like lose steam when you're working because you're exerting so much physical and mental energy. And I find that like having multiple projects going sometimes at the same time helps me with this burnout because when I'm losing steam with one, I can go to another and be reminded and excited of like why I enjoy being an artist. Because at the end of the day, we're all artists because we have this like fire in us to be that. Nobody is an artist because they were forced to be, or at least I've never met an artist who was like, yeah. womp, womp, <laughs> this was the life that was chosen for me. Um, it's always been someone who's like really wants to do this. And feels drawn to it. So having like a side project that like, maybe it's going to take you six years to do that project, but having it there is a thing that's just joyful. Like for me, I find that making my little clay sculptures and my pins are something that is so like meditative. And even if I'm working on a commission or a personal project, that's just making me annoyed and frustrated and I, I'm losing steam. I'll just go sit aside and work on one of those clay things and just be like, oh yeah, this is why I like to do this. You know, this is fun. It's low stakes. Um, do you have that? Do you have like a side project or a, or just a type a way of working that you go to sometimes when you, you know, need a moment to sit back? Yeah, I do. And it's something where we talked about this a little bit before the starting of the stream of how kind of evergreen we want to make this because we do have to kind of address the elephant in the room that at the time of this recording we're in the international pandemic and a mm -hmm. lot of people are kind of on a forced sabbatical and it i was talking to a friend of mine that i'll be a much more prolific painter once this pandemic stop uh, stops because right now i'm finding a lot of my time is spent on deep d as you said those happy projects that are just very casual for me like, yeah, a couple of sculpty sculptures that like I don't really show anyone. They're just kind of private, fun little things to do or small little like four inch by four inch study paintings, you know, things that aren't anything to write home about, but they're fun and exciting. And definitely on, the, on that note of getting like that spark going again, John Murph Devera is saying sometimes when I need to start and cannot find anything to paint, I go to the zoo and take pictures of animals. Then I paint them afterwards. Then I say, I'm a wildlife conservationist. <laughs> and that's such a big thing too of like, yeah, if your anxiety to start is so heavy and you just can't start a piece, then yeah, you said earlier, like take a walk, go to the zoo, read a book, do something to kind of start that back up in you again. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about this comment from 10,000 Crows. I mean, we addressed this a little bit, but I wonder how we can learn to enjoy the process more so we can have more patience. I know this is something that probably the both of us struggle with, but I'll start off by saying a few things that I've found to work is to really 
find way, find steps in that process that really work for you. Try and figure out what you, how you are as a thinker. I realized that I really don't like working with 3D materials, but I like playing around with 3D materials. Like the, the pressure of a final piece being 3D is no good for me, but I love you know, generating ideas with Sculpey. And like you said, I love taking walks. And I remember one time Clara told me um, when I first moved to New York that mocking a commute when you're working from home will really help you. And that is something that I think is really, really wise. Like the process of me starting my work is by starting to go get a go get a coffee, go on a walk and get a coffee. That can be you starting your work, you know, you doing a commute and that getting your juices flowing. So focus on things that work for you, because if you if you mock a commute and you come back and you're energized, your pencil will be more willing to hit that paper than if you're sitting in front of your couch, like with no coffee, feeling really like depressed. I don't think it's going to happen. So maybe you need to take the 30 minutes. But what about you, Alex? What are ways um, that you enjoy the process and give yourself more patience? That's you nailed it. Where having that kind of regiment of needing to start and it's kind of, I related a lot to like going to the gym where like after you're done with like a 25 minute or a 30 minute run, like you feel so much better, but it's like pulling teeth to actually get me there. <laughs> um, and it's a lot the same feeling with painting now that uh, like, cause yeah, I'm, a lot of my work is now working from home and you need to kind of replicate that feeling of just showing up and just mm -hmm. being willing and open to let it go. So what helps me is scheduling time and then setting that first 30 minutes of it of just doodling in the sketchbook. Like even if there's something due tomorrow, like no, 30 minutes where you just play around and you sketch whatever you want. If you want to just doodle cats, you just doodle cats and then you get to work after that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I love this comment from Calm Cuke. Uh, oh, like cucumber. <laughs> I find that if I push myself to at least put a line or shape on the page, I'll end up creating something. I, ju I drew just an eye that then turned into a whole pattern portrait this week. That's awesome. I love that idea of, you know, engaging yourself to start with something that's like impossible not to do, you know, like draw a line or find the first word that you see in your house and draw what makes you think of that and then just allow yourself to branch off and you know taking off that pressure of even in your sketchbook having the first thing be something amazing i was thinking about how like i love doing blind contours and just setting up a mirror and doing a blind contour of myself quickly could lead into a brainstorming session of something else or as myself as a filmmaker i love going on vimeo for 30 minutes every morning and watching like a couple of staff picks and getting the juices just flowing that way and i love what you were saying uh alex about even if it's 30 minutes of just drawing cats or something that has nothing to do with the project you're working on, it really might generate something, something amazing. Who knows? I wanted to bring up the topic because you were talking about like getting, going to the gym and having like, it's like pulling teeth to get there. But once you get there, it's fine. And it kind of got me thinking about accountability and um, holding yourself accountable, but also ways in which you can generate accountability in your life. And I was thinking about like having an artist community and having artistic friends, especially during the pandemic, which is another thing you brought up that I think, you know, is good to bring up. If I think how starting is sometimes hard when the only person that's really breathing down your neck to start is yourself. So if you can set deadlines with someone else holding you accountable, that could be really helpful. What do you think about that, Alex? Oh, yeah. Like I noticed my productivity went through the roof when I kind of reconnected with old painting friends who are just living in different states and we just connected over the Internet. And it's rather than saying, like, what are you working on? It's like, honestly, I haven't painted much the last couple of weeks. Just kind of haven't having someone to talk to be like, oh, I'm kind of playing with this idea. And even showing just something simple, like not fruitful is really valuable. There's mm -hmm. a funny, ironic thing that kind of we're talking about that's almost like the more you learn about art and the more you stress about making the composition right and making the thumbnails and studying the color, and the more it turns into work, there's an aversion to get started, it sounds like. And yeah, I think a lot of that finding balance is to know what it takes to make good art, but also 
knowing when to break those rules and when to just have fun with it. Definitely. I was thinking about like connecting with friends because that almost feels like you're just socializing and making art. Like I know like this is a little insight into the art prof staff thing, but we do these like Friday night draw alongs with each other just, you know, as like a hang, I've never gone to one of them. That's my own problem. But, you know, like I was thinking about how that's a great way of, you know, having accountability, do a Zoom session every Friday with a couple art friends, or even have your like mom or dad or sibling, you know, just, just vocalizing that, oh, I have to, I have to have three pages in my sketchbook filled with um, 2,500 Jordan's like, you know, thing that he has going on Discord of um, hands and heads. Can you make sure that Friday at 8 p.m., I have that done and can you check in two times before that and like just over a text have knowing that someone else is going to um be mad at you if you don't do it or scold you or like you know expect something <laughs> from you um is a great way of just being like okay well i just have to do something um and then you'll do something and more i can guarantee you that that's something even if it's not great and even if you throw it in the trash it at least will generate a little bit of energy um and create something awesome. I like this comment by uh, Rachel Diaz. It says, to me, enjoying the process is not using my sketchbook. I draw on any receipts I can find, pamphlets, anything really. I love that. I love the idea of just using what's around you. Um, I remember I wrote an article for Art Prof once, or it was a video or something about how right after I graduated, um, I would just draw anytime I had a moment. So like when my coffee was brewing or when my, um, pasta water was boiling, waiting for it to boil, I would just find the nearest thing and just sketch something. Um, and that's totally fine too. Do you find yourself doing this, Alex? Just like using any opportune moment or whatever you have on hand? Oh yeah. Uh, I wish I could remember his name, but he's like a fairly renowned, like older cartoonist. And he did like a little panel about how anytime a relative or a friend gifts him like a beautiful, expensive sketchbook, there's an, a weird pressure to not mess it up. And so all of his best sketches are on like the backs of receipts and bills and things like that. So yeah, that's that could be another way to kind of not worry about starting and just going. Neil mm. is asking, any thoughts about pre-planned work versus spontaneous work? What are your thoughts, Alex? I think it's always good to, if you feel that fire, just kind of go with it and go with that drive. Um, I actually, that's a great question. I'm now realizing that I do always kind of do two at the same time. Like if I'm working on, like right now I'm working on a commissioned portrait for somebody, which is of course very planned. And at the same time, my sketchbooks are filled with a personal project that's very kind of become loose and freeform and unplanned. Yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes because when you're working on a commission work or something client-based, it's, you can't really have it be spontaneous. It, it doesn't work like that. But I think that there can be spontaneity in, again, I think I've said the word process at least a hundred times. Someone should watch <laughs> this video back and count how many times the word process has been there. But I think that there can be some spontaneity in the process, even if the final you know, product is final. And I think all it really has to do is sometimes spontaneity can just be more fun and it can be more engaging and it can keep you engaged in your work. And really, I think the overarching topic of like, why is it so hard to start an artwork is just fear, impatience and that like engagement, you know, and just this like, oh, I'd rather be in bed. Um, so what gets you excited and what gets you, you know, get that fire going. So even with client-based work or something that has to be pre-planned, I think you can find moments of spontaneity within that, within that process. I like this comment from Anna Jolie that says, every once in a while, me and my friends FaceTime and work together on art. And sometimes we make art project ideas that we do that day. That's awesome. I think that's such a good, easy way, especially during this pandemic that we're living in and this new way of working and living to uh, be collaborative and do things that make, uh, you know, make you feel excited and fun because you might be working on this project together and then have a fun like 15 minute session idea and just do that. And that might get your juices flowing for the rest of the day. Do you do that, Alex? Do you like to, you know, FaceTime and work with other people or um, have like, you know, two things going on at once? I need to get back into that habit because I remember I loved it so much in school that you could just work in a studio space. 
and it was like an office really like in a comical way like the cubicle setup but everyone was working on either a puppet or a painting or a cool project so everyone was working but there was still that social element and i think replicating that if it works for you it's very helpful uh there's mm -hmm. a good point by john murph de vera of essentially summing up so you're saying habits and routines and yeah it's when we're talking about our memories of either homework or active client projects there is yet to be a homework assignment or a client project that i just wasn't feeling like started you just <laughs> do it <laughs> that's kind of like how i'm hardwired yeah and so not exactly. giving yourself the pressure of like turning yourself into your own boss like let it be fun for you but still kind of hold yourself to a regimented schedule say like hey i'm not doing anything tomorrow at 10 o'clock i'm going to start sketching and i won't stop until 11. that's my scheduled time and again mm -hmm. be gentle with yourself you don't have to wake up at 4 30 in the morning and sketch until 6 a.m you know just do it when you can and want to i love that that's such an alex thing to say as well but i think <laughs> it is be gentle with yourself it's sometimes so hard to start because you're not being gentle with yourself and you're not being kind and you're expecting what you start off as to be the perfect final thing. You know, you you want to realize that starting is starting and you're not going to find gold when you start. You have to like, you know, find gold or to dig a well. You have to start on the surface and you're not going to get there until you work and work and work and work and sometimes ask for help. And then you'll finally, you know, find the gold or find the water that you're looking for or whatever it is. Wow. That metaphor really came out of nowhere. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, as I was saying that, I was like, how do you find gold? I don't actually know anything about gold mining. Um, but no let's clue. pretend that you, let's pretend that you dig to find gold and it's at the bottom and you got to dig a little bit. That's what I was going for. Um, but overall, be kind to yourself, form habits, just figure out like what works for you. And like, like ask other people, you know, it's, it's not hard. It's not a bad thing to ask for help. And it's not a bad thing to take pauses and stuff. And it's something that clearly all of us have a lot of difficulty with. And I feel like I'm learning as with every new project I do, I'm learning um, a new way of working. But hey, guys, did you know that Art Prof is a podcast? We are on Spotify and Apple iTunes. Leave us a rating and a review. We will be in the post live streams channel of Discord, Alex and I. So if you want to continue this conversation and hang out, uh, join Discord. The invite link is in the description below and we'll be in the post live streams channel. Please hit that subscribe button to our YouTube. And thank you so much to our top Patreon support. Supporters. We really could not do this without all of you. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This is a really fun discussion. I hope everyone goes home and starts a project and or you're already at home. So start a project after this stream <laughs> is done and join us on the Discord to talk about it. Bye everyone. Thank you. <laughs>